Hey folks, what I got going here today is I uh, want to fix this here. This is these uh, axles have their their slats in them, right? And they slide in to the slot here, and of course they just use the frame to keep those flats from rotating. And of course the pressure of uh, you know your bolt and everything keeps this axle from rotating. However, the amount of torque here compared to out here. We're getting obviously pretty good torque, as everyone could see, uh, but this torque is massive. I mean, these things will strip right out if I leave them like that, because all there is is this little weenie piece of metal here, you know, maybe eighth inch metal there, keeping it from doing that, plus, like I said, the torque of the bolts and whatnot. So I got a couple fairly heavy duty guys here. You can see they're maybe not twice as thick, but much thicker i don't want to get too heavy duty because uh i have i have to get a spacer in there and whatnot like a, like you can see i can take out all that big bunch of spaces there except maybe the two on the inside but that i got a weld i got to cut a, a slot in here so it's the same size as these slots and then of course uh i'm gonna weld that dude on the other side too i'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that slide in there make it slide on there and then when it's all slid on there real nice I can obviously take out about five washers there and I'll be just down to one or two washers like it should be. And uh, and then of course, weld that dude in there. So I'd have to spin this out and this uh, one on this side and those. And it'll be impossible at that point because that's pretty heavy stuff there. That's what I'm doing, baby. I need to pull off these guys oh, at the moment. FD1316s here. It's that nut nicely. See, I don't have much thread on there either. So I'm gonna try and crunch it in just a smidge more, but I might have to adjust it or something. But uh, I'd like to get another thread or two on there. So, as you can see here, folks, I can't use these. The reason I can't is because they're, uh, they're too big. So I was able to find a couple nice little square washers there that have a smaller hole take a little straight edge here and go on the inside of that just a smidge like that i could get a crayon but <laughs> but this is <laughs> i found this <laughs> so i'm gonna use this big fat dude here <laughs> straight right there Get this thing to QA test here. She's tight, all right. Need a spit more. Okay, good. So far, so good. Okay, folks, I think I got this dude adjusted really nice. All right, not much slack. I got it to fit really nice. What I'm gonna do is clamp that dude nice and straight, obviously, and then uh, weld it. Okay, I did a little more cleanup on this. I took off the paint and a couple of key spots underneath it. I'm gonna lay a little tiny weld here on the back. A little bit of cleanup on this guy here. Okay, huh? Good enough to take a little bit of paint. Nice and heavy duty. That dude welded on nicely and ground. Oh, ground. <laughs> ground to death. That's right, good welding. If you're a good grinder, you can make a weld don't look so horrible. <laughs> of course, these look pretty horrible. <laughs> blackout bike except for this is not quite blacked out <laughs> yeah you can see i got uh this 80 amper on there that controller and i got me a 24 and a 48 to make 72 i uh just got it where it plugs in and then you turn it on but uh i don't have any any safety measure or any way to really totally cut it off without unplugging it so i'm going to install this guy here 
And then once that's in line, of course, if you want to break the battery like that, you're good. There's no battery. You want to drive somewhere? Click that dude on. Hit the button. I think I'm going to stall that dude right about like that on the side there. Yeah, not wheelie fast, but uh, fast. Or you could do a wheelie if you were talented. I'm not that talented. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I'm doing, baby. Peace. I think I'm going to do that dude just like that. Right about there. Hmm. Six. Okay, six. All right. This is six right here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, perfecto, perfecto, huh? Okay, okay I'm gonna crimp it on roughly that direction, just like that. Just crimping that enough to hold it right where it's barely touching it. Just so I can do this part, you got her now. Give it a little more here though. Okay, like those big wings standing up there, right? I like to turn it 90 degrees like that and give it one more. A double smashation. <laughs> A double smash. It's like that. That dude is on there. She on there, baby. She on. This is pretty massive cable for this application. Help it. See, I can feel it bottoming out now, but that insulation's not even touching. I cram it in there. It can definitely. Okay, terrific. Almost like a weld. They're compressed on like that. Got, uh, you know, like glue inside of it. And so it really makes for a really sweet connection. Now, this here, little fella. You want to get that guy in there like that, right? I got this wrench taped up because I'm using it before on electronics and just having a bit showing that's much more safe if you drop it on your batteries or something uh, yeah it's almost impossible to get it to short out unless you're a professional <laughs> so I've also put heat shrink just like this stuff right over a couple of wrenches which is also a handy methodology okay plenty tight Oh, I tie my batteries together with this little connection. I like to leave them like they are, you know, 24 and a 48, because I can repurpose these later on if I don't want to run it like this. I can whip that off and it's still a 48. And of course you make a little series connection like that. And you can plug two of them together. Make two of them together, yeah, 96. <laughs> yeah, that's probably 96 volts. Yeah, it depends on what's inside here, right? If you got 80 volt caps, obviously those capacitors are going to explode if you uh, start banging on it too hard so you got to be smart about it Actually, that could actually turn a smidge now couldn't it i'm going to tweak it a smidge Give it the QHS one time. Let's do this one time. Let's get you up here. We'll try to hit the gas. Oh, it came on because we had a little charge on our capacitors, but then it went right off. But this, turn that on. Now we're on. Let's try it again. Bang. Okay, let's give it the QA, the QA gas test. Mm -hmm. Oh baby. Yeah, about 53. Yeah, I think I have a, an appropriate tire wrap situation figured out here. Tire wrap. The appropriate zip tie. Okay, now that won't make it back around there, so I got me a, another little fella here. Mm 
Go give it the QA tester. The QA test. Got a little headlamp on my head here. Okay. That should be about fine. That's fine. There it is. It's all smooth. Really nice and smooth. Quite snappy, baby. Smoothly snapping. Yeah, this is the wheelie spot right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can get up to almost 20. <laughs> right there. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Okay, QA test is good. QA is good. Bit of a ride here on our bike. See what we got here. Let's jack the gate. Okay. Touch color, huh? There you go. That's that water right there. <laughs> Bam, I'm at the 20. Oh, 35, about 35. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this little round here. This is my little round round there because I. This is going uphill. Oh yeah, well, I just got 25. It goes uphill pretty good. Oh, this is slightly down here. Oh boy, she said. About 30. Oh, you got the 30. She said that. Nice little rear shock makes a big difference. The front porch is Twenty three, twenty four, look at the game. Oh my god. Twenty, that's it, guys. Get you, buddy. That's a snappy little bike right there. My BPM bike. And of course the one I just built there. Um just to compare a little bit, right? I got the, the back wheels basically lined up. You can see that the the F15 RS is about roughly about maybe almost a foot longer, maybe 11, yeah, maybe about 12 inches. Looks like about a foot to me, uh, and it's got a lot of beef up front. 
you know, it's got a lot of weight. It's got the shocks, you know, it's got a bigger everything, you know, everything's much heavier. And of course it's sticking out about a foot further. And uh, look at the seat position, right? Relative to the wheel, uh, it's back about a solid four inches from that uh, C9, that Cloud 9 seat. Yeah, with that 80 amp controller on there, it's plenty fast, plenty fast. Yeah, I had it up uh, almost 45, just horsing around a little bit in front of the house. And uh, this guy here, it'll actually go about 40, 45, but that's only, uh, you know, it's got a, uh, a 45 amp controller on there. It's got that 7245, which this guy's got an 80. And so, yeah, the pickup's a lot better on the, oh, by the way, this thing weighs, 98 pounds and that guy weighs 72 so it's almost 30 pounds heavier and uh yeah and it's got a much smaller speed controller and so it uh it's got good power it does pretty well uh, it climbs most hills no problem at all but uh very very casual in comparison to the little dyi guy <laughs> yeah this guy will fly up a hill yeah fly it flies even this thing's got the bigger motor you can see it's a little bit wider than this guy. This guy's a 1000, that's a 15. And uh, yeah, this one, the wires don't even get warm, but this guy here, of course, the wires were getting hot, actually, fairly hot, and you grab them down here, I was like, whoa, they're pretty warm. <laughs> but of course, I ran those uh, 14 gauges right to the coils, and uh, it doesn't seem to get warm at all, hardly, you know? So it does pretty good. The motor, I can feel it, you know, after I've been riding it for about 10 minutes. This is lukewarm, but it's not hot by any means. I'm sure on a good hot summer day, going up a long, long hill, yeah, you might have a problem, but you just have to be wise about that, and just not uh, overheat it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I've been running it. I've been running this motor for a couple years at uh, 72, 60 volts, or excuse me, 72 volts, 60 amps. And uh, yeah, so far so good, it keeps working. So we'll keep running it until the smoke comes out of it, and then we'll have to get a new one that the smoke is back on in there. <laughs> so yeah i like it foot pegs are really up high you can see often i ride like this though kind of like with my feet level which is a similar height as those foot pegs so anyway yeah the major thing on this thing i still really want to do is of course the front wheel the front forks so i want to replace those forks with something better these guys are okay but just so so they came factory on that bike but i want to get something that works good you know that is not just a spring and actually has rebound and whatnot and adjustability and then of course i want to get a tire that has a, a disc on it because i have disc brakes for the front i just need the the wheel that has the appropriate mounting and so anyway after that yeah a little bit of cleanup on the wiring and we're probably done <laughs> and until the next time